And now for the weather forecast for those of you needing to plan ahead. Weather patterns are looking unsettled over the next few days. Let's take a closer look at how the weather conditions are affecting people from east to west across the UK. So let's start across the east coast. We've got a few isolated showers just pushing in off the North Sea. These should tend to fizzle out through the course of the morning. Winds pushing in from a northwesterly direction and temperatures along the coast are highs of 4 degrees Celsius. I live on the River Colne and we're just fishing just out at the end of the River Colne in Essex. Today we're just going to go to the end of the river and just pull some lobster pots that, um, that I have set off there and hopefully we'll have something in them. In terms of uh, my fishing, I fish inshore, so every weather condition affects me, whether it's hot, cold, windy, calm, it absolutely rules my life and my business. The yeah, outlook for the following 24 hours, west 4 or 5, moving northwest 5 or 6. I have the Coast Guard forecast on the computer, I have the Coast Guard forecast on the VHF radio which gives me wind, visibility and general conditions of low and high pressures and where they're moving. The dominant factor is wind for me, so I actually watch the pressure charts to see in the next period how close the isobars are going to be. I'm looking to see if they're going to be wide apart, which will be lovely, calm weather, no wind, um, or if they're going to be close, and which way they're moving over the country. Is it a northerly wind, is it um, a, a, a rough easterly wind, um, or will it be a lovely warm west or southwest wind, great for fishing. Obviously the weather has a direct effect on uh, how much fish there is on the fish market, how much we would get paid for any species. If the weather's bad and boats can't actually set to sea, there's no fish on the fish markets to actually buy. But then when a boat can either brave the weather or the weather calms down, the first landings on the fish market will make the best price. Moving further inland, there was a frosty start across much of Essex. Temperatures last night did drop below freezing. In terms of the weather, it's not looking too bad. Mostly dry and bright, some decent spells of sunshine this afternoon. My day will start at uh, 5 to 6, and the first thing I do is I listen to the farming forecast uh, on the radio, and that tells me what will and won't be possible for that day's work. I work outdoors all the time, so the weather dictates what I can and can't do as to the seasons. We're now in late winter and the job I'm doing now is ploughing and ploughing is turning the soil over to create a seedbed for the seeds in the spring. Uh, and that's very weather dependent because if the weather is too dry then it's too hard for me to get the plough in. If it's too wet then uh, I can't get grip on my tyres between the tyre and the earth so I can pull my plough along. So I listened to the forecast this morning uh, and it told me we were going to get a, a nice dry day which is good for me working the soil uh, and I'm also told this weekend it's going to turn very cold and frosty which will be ideal because uh, I'll turn my uh, earth over on the seed bed and then I'll get some frost action uh, to turn that into a, a good tilth for putting seeds in. I'll look at the weekly forecast so I can sort of think about my work for that week. Ideally for a farmer, he gets the weather that are best for his crops. So he gets rain when they need rain, he gets sunshine when they need sunshine. We always wish sometimes that the weather was a little bit better than it actually is. But I think at the same time, we're philosophical enough to know that we have to get on with the weather as it is rather than as we would like it. Moving further north into Cambridgeshire, a dry start here. Now, if you're outdoors today, you will notice quite a brisk breeze, which at times will gust up to 30 miles per hour. Light rain and drizzle for this afternoon. Generally, uh, first thing, start of the week, we get a weather forecast for the week. The specific forecast gives us the area in which the tower crane is working, the height of the tower crane, and then it gives us a, a general feel of what the wind's going to be doing throughout the day. We look at the, the gusts and obviously the mean speed. Well, 38 miles an hour is the cutoff for the tower crane wind speed. We generally look at 20 miles an hour for lifting generally, if that's anything. Anything above that, then you will start thinking about the size and the configuration of what you're lifting. So you don't be lifting glass panels if the wind starts going up to 30 miles an hour because you've less control. The 
forecast we have is for a, a gust speed of 31 miles an hour today, but just stood here looking down, I wouldn't say it's even that. As you can see, uh, the conditions on the floor are a lot calmer than what they are in the air, so that's why it's imperative we get a, a forecast of the height the crane's working. We get the weather forecast, so that determines what kind of work we're trying to achieve during the day. But we can also uh, monitor the weather and the wind speed throughout the day, just using this monitor. But when you, while you're operating, you can generally feel if the wind's starting to pick up without having to look at that because of the way the crane's reacting. Obviously because we're so high we can see any sort of weather front coming in. Wind's obviously a big factor, but rain, especially if the guys are doing something water critical on the floor, we can inform that. We can obviously see a bit of a weather front coming through, so, so it's pretty handy being up here, so you get a bird's eye view. So moving west across the Midlands and into Warwickshire, outbreaks of light rain and drizzle here. It's a cold day, highs of just four or five degrees Celsius. These temperature values below average for this time of year. So if you're out and about, do wrap up warm. This is National Grid's National Gas Control Centre. And from here we undertake monitoring 24 seven of the, uh, the gas flows through the UK. Temperature has the largest effect on gas demand, and that's about the amount of homes in the UK that are heated by gas for central heating. If a cold weather front comes through and it cools temperatures, say, by two or three degrees in an area, it can have a fairly large impact on the amount of gas being used in that area. We need to preempt that and make sure that we've configured the system in advance, because obviously gas can't instantly be moved from one side of the UK to the other. Typically, for every one degree C colder it gets, we expect to see a 5% increase in gas demand on the system. We saw record gas demands in January 2010. We actually saw gas demands some 30% higher than you'd expect to see um, at that time of year. Houses got a lot colder, central heating systems were having to work a lot, lot harder, and therefore an awful lot more gas was consumed in the UK. So across North Midlands into Worcestershire, the good news, no chance of any prolonged showers here today, but as a band of rain pushes up from the southwest this afternoon, it'll turn that rain into sleet as it encounters the cold air across western parts of the country. The main part of my working day is looking after rivers like the River Severn here and making sure that the people who live in and around there are protected from flooding. There is a, obviously a massive impact in terms of the weather. It starts raining in Wales, the River Severn comes up and we have to deal with that. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we're monitoring rainfall and weather conditions. When you get a, a weather front that comes across, it's the one that stops and just keeps raining and raining and raining in one place. Those are the ones that cause us the problems. This probably floods at least once a year, so all that information that we gather from the forecast helps us then to um, get our flood warnings out in good time. Believe it or not, this whole uh, channel here fills, spills over the, over the sides of the banks and floods uh, the race course here, which acts as a natural floodplain, so it's somewhere for that excess water to go. The tricky bit is on the other side of the river, where we've got businesses and housing and a main road into Worcester. So we've built a flood defence now. This keeps the road open in flood conditions and protects all the houses and all the business and industry. If you think about how the landscape has changed over the last 50 years, how agriculture has changed, how much building and construction and development has been in our country. So we've changed the whole face really of, of the surface of Britain in a way. The weather and the impact of the weather on the floods is obviously, it seems to be the trend is that it's getting more frequent. So we're gonna get warmer, wetter winters, uh, which will ca cause more flooding. And that's something we're all gonna have to learn to, to live with and to manage. So across into Wales, overnight mist and fog slow to clear, so a bit of a grey and a cloudy start to the day, especially over the hills. But the cloud should break up, allowing some sunny spells to develop this afternoon. Highs of 4 or 5 degrees Celsius. Cold day today. Let's uh, get kitted up. Nice 
Mountain Rescue is a voluntary service, a 999. We do get called out in all weather conditions. We are prepared for all weather conditions. Usually the time when we're not called out is rain because usually people stay indoors, but other times when it's cold, dry, we will be called out. When it's hot, dry, we'll be called out. People have either gone missing due to the fog and haven't worn the right clothing or in the snow or in the summer where they've just become tired, they've dehydrated themselves and they've become injured. A lot of us actually monitor the weather on a daily basis. This just allows us to really understand whether we are in the likelihood of getting a call out, but also to prepare ourselves for what kit we should be wearing. So it helps to us for our speed of response. The ideal weather conditions when we're in a rescue is a very clear sky because that will allow us to really be able to search long distances. Where today, when we've got slight cloud, it is going to make it far more difficult. We have got a known location of a casualty, a suspected uh, lower left leg injury. The person has been here a number of hours. With the weather conditions we've got, um, I'll treat for hypothermia. The weather in the Brecon Beacons can change quite dramatically. A lot of people don't recognise that. We have to keep an eye on the weather because even when we're searching, if the fog comes down, that is going to change our way we are searching. Also, if the weather is coming in, we have to think about getting that casualty out a lot faster. And across the west coast of Wales, we should hold on to the dry, sunny weather for much of the day. There's a light, variable offshore wind. There's a really important part of surfing and mostly it's the wind because the wind travels thousands of miles from way out in the Atlantic and it comes in over the sea and when the energy sort of dissipates on a shallow piece of water then that's what causes the waves. The surf forecast websites will give you the wind speed, the wind direction, the swell size and the swell direction so you can check the conditions for the sport that you're doing. Ideally, you want the wind to be picking up out at sea and bringing in some swell patterns. So today's weather, for instance, is pretty good for a surfer. Um, it's very little wind at all, and the wind that there is is kind of offshore, really light breezes, which is excellent. This beach works really well just after low tide. This is a good day. We'll, of course, keep you updated in our bulletins through the course of the week. I'll be back tomorrow, but for now, enjoy the rest of today and do stay tuned. Bye-bye.